Hello and welcome to Conversations with a Conk. I'm your host, Alex Holden, and today we have a very special episode. It's the fifth episode of the podcast, and today we'll be, we will be featuring two guests. Um, the two young men who will be joining the podcast today are Christoph Strong. He's a, a history major, a blogger, photographer, and he is a member of the FNM, the Free National Movement Party, um, which is one of the two dominant political parties in our, in our current climate. And it is also the party that is currently in power, um, the party of Prime Minister Hubert Alexander Minnis. And uh, the second uh, member of the Triumvirate is Denzel Bazard, and he is representing the PLP. Denzel is a lawyer, and he um, focuses on anti-money laundering and compliance, and he has his degree in law and comparative politics. And what's so special, what these two young men have done is they've come together to create a group called Spectrum Politics, along with their, uh, their absent friend, uh, Jason Brennan, who represents the third party, uh, the DNA, the Democratic National Alliance. And uh, the reason I wanted to speak with these young men and uh, speak about their, uh, their organization, Spectrum, in general, is because... I, I'm watching, I've been watching the American news and I've been noticing the polarization between uh, the left and the right. And I, I can't help but worry, but the same degree of polarization, political polarization, might actually spread to our country. Now, the, it, the, it's not that the disagreements are inherently a problem in uh, political discourse. That, that, that comes with the, the territory. Um, the problem arises when the two political uh, tribes or the two political parties or sides uh, no longer seem able to agree on a central set of facts. And th this has happened in America, but um, it doesn't seem, it hasn't happened in the Bahamas yet or at least uh, not in any way that can't be settled in a court of law if you, uh, you know, follow the various uh, scandals. So, um, uh, you know, I'm impressed with these young men and what they're doing, and uh, I, I, I haven't met them, so I wanted to get them on the podcast, support them, and uh, dig into their brains a little. So w without further delay, I bring you uh, Christoph Sh Strawn and Denzel Bazard. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, um, uh, I'll say like a magic word, like banana, and then I'll pretend like we're starting. Okay. Okay. Uh, b banana. Hey. Uh, so, uh, welcome to the podcast, guys. H how's it going? Everything's going well. Thanks for having us uh, on the podcast. Uh Happy to be yeah, here. Yeah, doing all right. Happy to be here as well. And um, uh, this is uh, C Chris. You spoke first, right? Chris Strong? Yeah, I did. Okay. And the second speaker is Denzel. Okay. So we haven't met before, but um, I've given you, I uh, gave a brief introduction of who you were at the beginning of the podcast. But um, just so maybe we can get to know each other a bit and so the audience, the listeners can get to know you, um, maybe you guys could uh, give a brief introduction of sort of who you are and um, how you got to come up with the idea of uh, the podcast uh, Spectrum. So, uh, Chris, let's uh, start with you. Oh, thanks. Um, well, Spectrum is actually um, the brainchild of... Uh, one of the co-founders who's not here at the moment, Jason Brainin. Um, mm -hmm. He approached me with the idea um, with the overall goal to make politics more accessible in the Bahamas. And mm -hmm. uh, he approached me as someone who is 
a part of another party uh, than he is. And, uh, you know, he approached Denzel for the same reason, because we're all a part of uh, the three different uh, main political parties in the Bahamas. Um, so that in itself was kind of a big deal because, um, you know, Denzel and I, we were having a private conversation earlier and he mentioned how we live in a politically toxic country. And it's kind of a big deal, you know, because you don't see people from uh, the political parties here in the Bahamas coming together for uh, many causes. So, so that was for that reason, that was like one of the main reasons that I decided that I would want to get involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's funny. You said uh, politically toxic. Um, You're obviously, you guys both watch American news, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Is it is it as would you say it's as toxic or more toxic of a political environment as uh, America? <laughs> Honestly, I would I would argue that it's probably more toxic because it's so much smaller. And you know, like how with um in science you have insular giganticism and insular uh, uh, dwarfism with uh, certain animals they get. They were a part of a, an overall landmass. One piece of the landmass breaks off, so that animal either um, gets significantly larger than its mainland counterpart, or significantly smaller. I think in our case, you know, that toxicity um, was giganticized because we're so small, you know, and so, it's hmm. it's just ridiculous. So you think? So you're saying? Um, everything is almost personal yeah hmm. maybe even the, the narcissist well i i i, I <laughs> sorry i i wouldn't personally say that it's worse i hmm. think talking about behemoth and american politics one thing you definitely have to talk about is that we are almost i i wouldn't say identical but what they do definitely has a effect on what we have in Bahamian politics. But with Bay- with uh, American politics right now, you have to understand that identity politics and identity politics over there and over here mm-hmm. are almost identical now in that the parties don't actually try to implement any policies based mm-hmm. on what those two parties are uh, argue against it's just based on about and what that party is about and how do i campaign against that party and that's been an identical uh that's that's been identical between the two parties uh the, sorry the two political ideologies in both the bahamas and the u.s mm-hmm. so that's the parallels that we run so um We've sort of just uh, dove into the thick of it, and uh, I definitely want to get back into identity politics and some more of the parallels between uh, American, the American political ecosystem and the Bahamian uh, political ecosystem. But um, uh, for, for, just for now, just so we can uh, have our listeners catch up with us, let's, uh, let's zo- zoom out a little bit. Um, Denzel, you're uh, you. You guys are both young guys. Denzel, you're 24. Chris, you're you're 25. Um, Denzel, you are a lawyer and you investigate. Uh, you focus on uh, anti money laundering and uh, compliance. We mainly do uh, civil work. Uh, we do some work in anti money laundering and compliance as well. Oh, okay. And you, so you represent uh, the PLP party, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, Chris, you're uh, you're a history major in your final year at university, and you represent the F and M party, right? Yeah. Okay. So th- so let's uh, can, can um can you guys help out our listeners and let's let's zoom out a bit. What are these parties? Um, what is what does the what's the PLP? What does it stand for? Um, what's the F and M? What does it stand for? What, what are the differences? Because, um, you know, let's say to the, to the layman, 
to the to, to the layman, and uh, you could perhaps uncharitably uh, describe these parties, the main parties, as um, you know, PLP is the yellow one, and the joke is is that they're the corrupt party, uh, the the party for criminals, and then with the F and M, the the joke is that uh, they're the the white people party, the the colonialist party. So, why is this um, why is this description you know not true? And uh, what's what's the real difference between these two parties? <laughs> well, Chris, you want to go first? <laughs> uh, I figured you would. This is something that I know you'd love to speak about. Well, with the F and M, uh, why people think that that's the white party is because it's it's a subsect of the UBP. Oh boy. And <laughs> the UBP <laughs> was a party that the UBP was a party that that was against our independence oh. early on before 1973 yeah, no, no. and there's a there's a lot to it, it's it's not that simple but they were the party that was against independence and they were the party that established the oligarchy in our country so that's why i am a, a plp supporter right now and i'm sure my i'm sure, i'm sure my learned friend christopher would <laughs> would say differently all right, so I will say this. Yeah. Um, historically, in the Bahamas, the first political party was the Progressive Liberal Party. It was founded by three, uh, as Bahamians would say, Conky Joe men on the island of Long Island, which is known for mm -hmm. its Conky Joe people. Um, and after that, it was followed by the UBP. Uh, the UBP became the dominant political party in the Bahamas. Uh, for many years. Um, it's commonly said that they were against independence, but they were actually not against independence. Um, the UBP was actually, UBP actually pushed for self-governance. Uh, the UBP was there uh, during every constitutional reformation meeting to help uh, attain uh, independence within the colony. It was their goal to see independence. Maybe they had different reasons for attaining independence in the Bahamas than the PLP, but it was not their goal for us to remain a colony, as it is commonly said. Uh, the free national movement came about because of disagreements and infighting uh, within the PLP. And a lot of people say that, you know, the FNM is the what's left of the UBP, but it actually got its result from the PLP in that uh, eight men, now known as the Dissident Eight, left the PLP and they formed what was called at the time the Free PLP. Uh, mm -hmm. That Free PLP then turned into the Free National Movement. Uh, the Free National Movement then absorbed whatever whichever, um, what's the word I'm looking for, whichever candidates or, or would-be politicians from the UBP into their party, because at that time, the UBP had already dissolved. Um, so the, mm. the what I guess you can say one of the differences is that in the, the early days, you know, um, in the early independent Bahamas, one of the main um, campaigning points for the free national movement was anti-corruption, anti-nepotism um, and favoritism, anti-victimization, um, you know, progression of and development of family islands. Those were the platforms of the FNM. And the, the PLP was more of, you know, just empowerment for the black Bahamians. Um, so so that, that's, that's, that's what their differences were. Um, um, so, yeah. So, so Denzel, uh, what, how would you uh, characterize your um, learned friend Chris Strawn's framing of the situation? Is that uh, are we pretty much in agreement, or do you think he uh, he flowered it up? He prettied it up a bit. Well, flowered up or not, no, it's no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, Chris. The thing, the thing with Chris, uh, I disagree with Chris on a lot of things, but one thing I will never disagree with Chris on is historical accuracy so what he says <laughs> is correct mm -hmm. i i'd have to put it towards my my learned friend as you said but he he does know his history 
That's that's something I would never argue against Chris with. But I will say this. I will say this. Um, as it relates to, as it relates to the color line in the Bahamas, you know, because the PLP's platform since its inception was um, the empowerment of Black Bahamians, and you know, one of the biggest goals, despite the fact that it was founded by three non-Black men was to bring about an end to the disenfranchisement of Black Bahamians in the colony. And because of that, the party resonates more with um, especially grassroots Bahamians. And the FNM has become uh, known as more of an the elitist. Bougie. Yes, the, 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 bougie, the bougie one. Uh, yes. You know, one, so... one that favors uh, white foreigners more. Whether whether the, that the, the bourgeoisie, it, it, it is the, the bourgeoisie, and then whether you have people like not, it can be you argued. have people like Brent Minette, and then you have people like uh, you have people like Diagla and Brent Minette. So you, ha- it's hard to argue against that. That's the bourgeoisie. You know, you know, you say that obviously, obviously, both parties, both parties are, of course, the bourgeoisie. But yes, because to say, you that, say that that party is not church, the bourgeoisie. I go to church with members from the PLP. You know, the, the leader of the PLP. I go to church with him in Lyford Key. You know, a former senator in Lyford Key, the deputy leader in Lyford Key. You know, so I don't know. So it's it's clearly you might be the bourgeoisie too. <laughs> I mean, so we can okay. So obviously, and this is what uh, the word on the street is that both parties, you know, both um, uh, Christie and uh, Ingram worked at the same law firm, and these were those both the prime minister, the respective prime ministers of the PLP and the FNM previously. Um, the common criticism on the street is that it's all one big political animal, two wings on a bird, and um, and obviously that's the political class. Um, but yeah, what 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 you're speaking to basically, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the F and M certainly has a, a, a pretense or an image of being bougie, like they're they're they're, they're sipping red wine and smoking cigars. Whereas the progressive liberal party, the yellow party, is the party of the people. Yes. You know, they're going to be yeah. going out in the streets and drinking Guinness and playing dominoes and having fun. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So we, we, we've broken that down. And uh, the, yeah, the way I wanted to uh, sort of frame this conversation so everyone could, uh, the listeners could follow along, along is um, we'll sort of frame how we got to this point. Uh, talk about our uh, political present, where we are now, and um, and uh, po- the possible uh, future of how, how we want to go, where we want to go. So, um, wh- where are we right now? Let's uh, let's describe the the current situation. So, let then the cu- the current values. We've already spoken to characteristics of the parties and. Uh, it depends on how how true they hold, but um, so the the Republicans in America are they're supposed to be the conservative party. They want small government, except when it comes to women's rights. In in which case, they want to get all up in there and uh, you know put their laws on abortion, etc. And then uh, the Democrats are uh, typically they're supposed to be the party of equality. I think except when uh, they want to stop Asian people from getting into Harvard. So, <laughs> uh, wait, but, but wait, wait, <laughs> I, <laughs> that, that last part, I, I, I wasn't, oh, you didn't sorry, read... I need some more information on that last part. Oh, you, you, yeah, you didn't read about that? Oh, that's okay. So let's, no. we'll, we'll sidebar. So what there's a, the, the Asian Student Association sued Harvard like a year ago when they won the lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Basically, um, too many Asians were getting into Harvard. And uh, it, it was basically like half Asians, or it was setting up to be that way. And they base then it wasn't enough um, skin color diversity for them. So they increased the score threshold for Asians to get in, whereas they lowered it for other minority groups and, um, you know, Native Americans, Black Americans, 
And then I, I'm not sure what they did with whites. Maybe they just left it. But um, yeah, it, it's just, it, it's really funny because it's an example of uh, the party that's not supposed to be the racist one kind of being racist. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, 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 I was, I was, uh, I was um, a little familiar with the uh, whole situation. You know, it was um, interesting, for lack of a better word, um, that entire thing. I think this was uh, maybe in 2018, maybe. Uh, but it, it was definitely interesting. Yeah, so let's talk about values. Just how the Republicans are uh, small government and the liberals are you know, big social welfare programs. What are the defining principles of uh, the F&M and the GOP? Uh, like, do we, do we, is there one that is more uh, renewable energy and green, or is there one that is more fiscally conservative? Uh, could, could, you, could you guys maybe speak uh, to your sp individual parties and maybe uh, talk about what it means to you and what values you think uh, or hold uh, Denzel. Let's uh, start with you and the uh, Progressive Liberal Party. Uh, no, well, I think with either party, you don't really have anything that can be contributable to the uh, Republicans and the Democrats. That's not how the parties of here work exactly. So that question, I think, would be. Uh, non sequitur. Mm. So, so there's, so there's not really any distinctive characteristics. It's. Uh, it's I wouldn't necessarily. I wouldn't necessarily say that because uh, for me, uh, a distinctive personality between the PLP and the FNM is that uh, you mentioned the phrase uh, fiscally conservative. Uh, the yes. FNM is known to be a little bit more tighter with uh, funds than the PLP. The PLP is known to be more of a spender than the FNM. Um, but in that same token. While the FNM may be known to say, um, you know, uh, have lower deficits, um, the PLP is is known, frankly, to attract more international uh, investment. Um, so that's that's one defining characteristic. Another thing is that because the PLP's platform for the past several decades has been on the empowerment of Black people, you will see that. There are more social uh, welfare programs. You know, for instance, you can think of urban renewal in the Bahamas, which was a product of the Progressive Liberal Party, uh, which was aimed at, um, you know, decreasing crime, uh, getting more after school activities for young kids, um, increasing police patrols in neighborhoods uh, and all that kinds of things. Um, so, you know, uh, I would say that the PLP is, uh, can in some ways be uh, more left-leaning and the mm -hmm. FNM can be more right-leaning. But, um, mm -hmm. but I would agree with Denzel and say that generally, generally, you know, they're, they're pretty similar. But, you know, there are, there may be instances where you can see the FNM's right lean more and the PLP's left lean more. But uh, I wouldn't say that, you know, they're both equally center, no. Mm -mm. Okay, so perhaps more center right and center left, even more so yes, than, uh, yes. than their American counterparts. Yeah, so, yeah. You, yeah, you would have to understand that there isn't necessarily... There, there, ne there isn't necessarily uh, one side when you talk about the uh, the spectrum it's it's not neither left or right it's it's extremely center all right um well great that's good uh we've got a got a good overview so uh, one of the reasons i i hit you up um chris was um mm -hmm. i i spoke to joey and he was uh you know he told me a little bit about what you were doing and uh, it's, it's very similar to an organization I was uh, consulting with in the States called uh, Purple Bridges, which is, um, I mean, you can see it in the name, you're building a bridge and you mix red and blue together and it's purple. Uh, they're working to uh, cross the bridge of partisanship. Um, 
is it uh, you're, you've obviously created this podcast uh, spectrum to hopefully bridge the political divide. And um, I'm assuming make progress towards uh, a vision that all Bahamians can share in versus just uh, one party or the other. Yeah, that's exactly it, actually. Oh, great. Oh, well, I, I got, got lucky on the description there. Um, is uh, So what um, what progress have you made? What, what shared goals have you identified uh, so far that um, basically all Bahamians, whether they're FNM or PLP, can or DNA, we haven't uh, spoken about the, the redheaded stepchild in the room. Um, but uh, what shared goals have you identified that are common to both our in- both interests of both parties? So, um, if we look at our values, the values of spectrum politics, um, uh, as a group, uh, we identified our six core values as patriotism, camaraderie, fairness, collaboration. Um, accessibility and versatility. And those were just um, six six key ideals and values that we felt were applicable for all uh, Bahamians, irrespective of political affiliation, or if they opted not to be affiliated with any politics, which is also their right. Um, so patriotism, you know, um, national advancement and progression camaraderie is you know a spirit of brotherhood amongst everybody despite um, your political affiliation fairness in that um we we expect that everybody should be treated equally despite their political preference collaboration amongst political parties because the country is just too small to be um uh so divided or divisive politically Accessibility, and that's for um, that's in regards to the general populace, and I think that's probably our biggest goal in making politics more digestible and accessible for uh, the general populace, but in particular, young people. And then versatility, uh, being able to uh, that that's a part of the accessibility in that we'd be able to reach uh, more people through a variety of means, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's. Um, you mentioned something interesting there that I, I think, or I think it would be interesting to our listeners um, about uh, the the environment being too small to be politicized. So we have we have roughly three hundred eighty thousand people living in the Bahamas, um, and I believe fifty thousand Bahamians currently work for the Bahamian government, um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but the, the perception amongst the public is that every time a new party gets into power, it almost seems to be like a, a changeover in, in jobs. Like uh, the party just, uh, the, other, the party fires the old guard and brings in the new. And, um, you know, that's definitely, uh, that, that seems to be the perception from a lot of, uh, a lot of people. And the other perception is, is if your party isn't in power, uh, you find it very difficult to get things done. Like, it, it's almost as if they, they check your party card at the door. Like, you go to the Ministry of the Works, if, uh, if the F&M's in power and you have an F&M card, you might get your plans faster. And uh, the reverse with the PLP, except, you, you know, you might give them a, you know, a bribe and they might take it <laughs> and you get a... <laughs> Get him fat. Get to jump ahead in the queue. Is, is does this uh, perception ring true with you at all? Does this? Um, how does it match with your intuitions? Sorry, I think I think that rings true with with every country. If you have if you if you have a if you have a political stronghold on any country, uh, that that same thing is going to be true. Yeah, I think that's it doesn't matter if it's a small island country or if it's uh, if it's America. If you have the political stronghold, that thing is what you said just now is always going to be true. Yeah, um, bringing it closer to home, you know, if we look at if we look at just the region, if we look at the Caribbean region, or even if we just um, <clears throat> get smaller and we look at just Caricom. 
Um, even if you look at within CARICOM, the same problem exists in that um, whenever one particular party takes over from the other particular party, you know, there's there's an expectation of of who will receive benefits and who will receive favors. You know, in Jamaica, you you say the labor rights uh, will be able to get whatever they want now that Andrew Holness has gotten his third. Um, mm -hmm. swearing in as prime minister, you know, in Trinidad and Tobago, it's, um, you know, you know, uh, what, what Dr. Keith Rowley, Dr. Keith Rowley, you know, you expect that with him as prime minister, again, that the Afro uh, Trinidad Trinbagonians will, will have more favors than the Indo Trinbagonians. Uh, uh, so, so it's, I think, I think that's a problem we have in the Caribbean in general. Um, and like Denzel said, you know, this may be true for every country, even larger countries. I can't speak to that, but, you know, uh, you know, paying, paying attention to Caribbean politics and Caribbean cultures. We, um, you know, there's, there's a, say, a, a phrase we have in the Bahamas called curry favor. And, you know, mm -hmm. honestly, we are a curry favor set of people. And that's even outside of politics. Even in the private sector, you know, we always say it's who you know, because you can go to someone in a private sector job and you can have two degrees, um, five years of experience, but because the owner of the place where you are applying is friends with someone else and their child needs a job, despite the fact that you clearly have the qualifications for whatever it is that you're applying for, that person's child will get the job over you. So I, I can't mm. say that that's specific to politics. That's just us as a people. The Jamaicans have a phrase, we say curry favor. The Jamaicans talk about links. Uh, it's say yeah. links, links get you. It's, 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 you know, it's just the links between people that get you what's needed or, or what you, what you can get. So I don't think. I don't think that it's limited to politics. It's present mm. in politics. It's present in governance, but it's not. It's not endemic to, um, you know, the political structure of the Bahamas, or even the country, um, or, or you know, a few other countries. That's just that's just a societal norm that we have to look at changing in many aspects. Yeah. Is um, so. What are what are the best way? How do we escape this? How do we escape this uh, this back and forth? Obviously, what you're doing is just so intriguing. Uh, the Spectrum Project. I, I think that's a good first step. But um, I mean, you know, one of the ideas I've had is uh, of de de depoliticizing government services is just having um, it run by artificial intelligence or websites. Surely, if you uh, if you take the human out of the equation, you can start, begin to remove some of those social biases. Uh, is oh no, that's a sorry. That's a that's a problem as well because somebody has to do the programming for that. Mm. And when you do the programming for that, then you have biases that are built into the programming as well. So that's not a that's not a end all for the problems that we have right now. Mm, you don't think you could, I mean, obviously you don't have a column for political affiliation. Like you just don't store that data. I mean, uh, I, I don't, I don't see it. How would a programmer uh, input a bias to prep to what's it called? Bias, uh, fate, curry favor towards a certain political group. Oh, well, you can have, um, it, it depends. It depends. You can have uh, somebody that, uh, well, especially now that you can't, uh, we, we don't want people to touch anything. You can have somebody that, ha uh, that programs a certain system that says, um, if uh, we have a, a digital program that can read fingerprints, the darker fingerprints don't, go to, uh, don't, don't get read as well as the lighter fingerprints. And that's happened mm. in, 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 in programs like that. Yeah. That there are be. multiple, yeah, there, there are, there are multiple uh, um, articles on that you can read about. So, 
So that would work in somewhere like, uh, I think you mentioned Trinidad, where you have the Indo-African Afro group and you have the Indo-Indian uh, group, or I can't remember, um, where one, one political group is noticeably darker shades than the other. But you think that would, you think that would work that well over here? Are all lights, are really light-skinned people tend to be F&M like that? <laughs> no, no, the problem, see, the problem is, um, <laughs> the problem is uh, that system would only work uh, for the for the lighter complexions. You understand? Oh, you're saying the system wouldn't even work at all. Right. There's uh, like I said, you can you can you can you can read up on articles about that as well. Okay. Where certain where certain where certain electrical programs don't work for darker skins. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, let's 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 get out of the technical realm. Hopefully, um, in the future, some young aspiring uh, Bahamian programmers can figure out a way. You know, if they're 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 more intelligent than us, they can figure out a way to try and overcome some of these biases that we desperately want to remove from our political system. Right. Um, but I was understand. I was just saying that um, in the context of what you were saying, in terms of um, programming. Hmm. Mm, it's not a it's not a fix all technology can't fix right. everything yeah right okay so let's uh so i've had a few guests on the podcast so far um i've had uh stefan delavo um talking about uh economics national economics uh blockchain i've had uh travis robinson the mp for Bain and grants town on uh discussing the coronavirus and its consequences for the nation and our citizenry um one of the things, uh, and I've actually I've had Aaron Green on as well to talk about human rights. And one of the central themes that has uh, come up and is that um, because of the country getting shut down and because of the rampant inequality, we, we're we're at we're experiencing some of the highest levels of poverty. Uh, that we've experienced in our time of being just being independent. Um, something like 75, 80% of the country uh, doesn't of citizens don't have $500 in their bank account. Um, first of all, I, d is uh, that statistic seem, uh, does that, is that correct with your intuitions? And if so, um, what, what by, while I have you here representing both parties, what bipartisan solutions uh, do, do we have to sort of to fix this, to close this income gap? And uh, yeah, Denzel or Chris, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure the. Oh, I was no, I was only quiet because I know that um, you know um, inequality and poverty is something that Denzel is really passionate about. So I was just giving him the opportunity to speak first. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> it's not something that it's not it's not something that people are necessarily passionate about. It's just something that is a thing. You understand? Um, sorry, can you say where you are, where you are, um, where you're located right now? Because that would be easier for us to speak about. Sure, I, um, I'm right. I'm right on uh, Village Road. Oh, sorry. I know. I thought you were outside of the country. Oh no, no, no. No. <laughs> okay. This is uh, yeah, you're on the Conversations with a Conk podcast, and uh, I'm the <laughs> conk. No, with 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 people who are um, for homeless people especially, uh, what you have to understand is that. Uh, I think a lot of people think that homelessness is a choice. They people people think that you say this is a choice. I chose to do drugs. I chose not to go to class. I chose not to go to school. But it's not a choice. Uh, homelessness is just a part of the part of that. Has to Hey Denzel, you uh you broke you broke up. Can you uh Denzel, you're breaking up. 
Hey Denzel, don't worry. I, I can. Uh, I'm gonna go back and edit over Sorry, this. Yeah. So it. Uh, yeah, that was um, better. Yeah. Yeah. Re rewind and uh, start from homelessness. It's it's not their fault. Yes. Hmm. You're breaking up. Okay, I think he what he was trying to get at was um is that especially here in the Bahamas we have this perception whereas whenever something negative happens to somebody that you know they put themselves in that position or they were just careless. So you know, you see a homeless person is like, Well, child, that's why you always gotta make sure you go to school yeah, and Yeah, we can Yeah. Yeah. And it's like you go to school and you make sure you go to class on time so that you don't be homeless like them. But what we don't do is we don't address the issues um, such as such as income inequality within uh, um, in, uh, among our society that prevents a lot of children from going to school, even public school, because their parents can't afford uniforms. Mm -hmm. Or and, um, how do we? Can we try and get Denzel back too? Is he? Oh, his internet must have dropped. I didn't even notice he left. So yeah, it's 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 issues like that. Um, and so... how do you think that uh, ties into our religiosity? Because um, you know, uh, we're a very superstitious people. So and often. Uh, part of our culture is if you pray and if you give tithings to, to your pastor and to God, uh, the Lord will bless you with wealth and health. Uh, how, do you think that out of this sort of victim blaming? I think it can, especially when you consider the fact that, you know, if something negative happens to you, you say that, that must be punishment for some sins you committed. Um, but if if we read the Bible, we know that there have been many faithful individuals who have been put in adverse situations, not because of their sin, but, you know, because of other situations. We look at the story of Joel, you know, we consider him oh, and, yeah. and everything, Job, sorry, and we consider everything that Job went through. We look at um, David, you know, before David was king. And we see how much strife he went through as a boy because he was ordained to be the future king and how much he had to go through and hide and run for his life, you know, not by any fault of his own. Or even if we look at Jesus Christ himself, who went through so much suffering uh, and not because of any any sin of his own. So it's it's unfair. For us, because a lot of times we feel as if, oh, well, they must have done something. And this is why this is happening to them. When a lot of times it's just the unfair systems of, of our society that are in place. Uh, you know, well, it, it's not even it's not. A, it, is it? It's it's sure it's the symptom. It's the systems. But it, you don't choose your genetics. You don't choose your parents. You don't choose right, and that's your... and that's that's a part of it. You know, if you you hear a certain last name, and you automatically there's there's a perception of a particular last name, and you expect to see a certain hue, and expect for them to be able to do um, a certain live a certain lifestyle compared to another last name in the Bahamas, and it shouldn't be like that because if if the island is 20, we say 21 by 7, and it's not even really 21 by 7 because it's more like 20.6 and 6.7 like that or something like that. So the island is so small where the capital city is, yet the inequality is so extreme. And, and then we can pinpoint specific last names and say that these people um, have this while these people don't. And... And it's it's weird, for lack of a better word, that you know, like you said, you you don't control uh, your family or your genetics or anything like that. But it's weird that in such a small country that those can be determining factors of what you amount to within the country. Mm -hmm. Hey, Denzel, we got you back, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Can you guys hear me well? um, Chris basically expanded on, I believe, what were the points you were going to make, which uh, if I was to distill it in a single sentence, you know, you did not choose the circumstances of your birth. So uh, why, uh, yeah, how, so I just want to bring it to the policy stage. Uh, Denzel, since you're interested in this and because you're representative, you're a representative of the party, which seems to be more socially inclined. Um, what, what policies, specific policies uh, are, are there that, or what, what steps can we do to reduce this income inequality gap? Well, we had a, we had a chance to work on our gender equality income gap and we voted against it. Right, right. Yeah, I just had Aaron Green discussing about that. And that, um, yeah, we voted against it because we didn't want uh, gay people to get married, right? Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it, <laughs> it was... What, what, in your um, view? <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to, ex it's hard to explain because it, it, I think that was one of the points there. It's definitely not the only thing. That's, that's not why, but uh, that's definitely one of the points that was made, but we had an, we, we had a, a, a an opportunity to have a, a gender equality referendum passed. And we we failed it. We voted no because of what well, that reason for one, mm. and a lot of other reasons as well. But basically, on our anti LGBTQ. Do, do you think it had reasons. anything to do with um, what, what was uh, men just being misogynistic? Was that a factor at all? Mm. That so definitely it was, really was. A, a web of uh, cause a web of causal factors that really but you can't that. you can't necessarily say it was men being misogynistic because then um i think it was the society in general inclusive of women because women uh make up a, a larger population yeah women women uh, in are terms, if we just look at the referendum more women voted than men mm. and oh and so it, it's, and it's the, still, the woman the law <laughs> the wo the yeah. the women were the misogynists. <laughs> all of us, we all were. <laughs> oh, that's that's great. No women, women, women outvoted men, but we we as a society w was more misogynistic, and that wasn't. Yeah, we, we can't blame that on women. The reason why all those women voted no was society. Was because of our misogynistic society that the society oh, that we live in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's um, that's that's fun. That's fun. Um, so, uh, it, yes. Uh, so, um, any any other uh, policies coming from the PLP or the FNM on uh, uh, solving this income inequality gap, or is the answer to uh, open that resort on Eleuthera and um, just give everyone jobs folding towels? <laughs> And that's a part of the problem right there. Do, I mean, do I you want to honest answer? Loose, man. I, I feel, and uh, you know, I'm so grateful to have you guys on this podcast, but I, I can't help but ha uh, have the feeling that you're holding, you're mincing words. <laughs> well, Denzel and I share the same, Denzel and I share the Chris, same, you have any words, while we may disagree on a lot as it relates to mm -hmm. tourism, Denzel and I share the same position. Um, in that the answer to our problems, uh, the answer to uh, lowering the wage gap in the Bahamas is not by opening another resort because that's what contributes towards the wage gap. And that we open these resorts and the overwhelming majority of the employees are Bahamians, in particular Black Bahamians, who um, are involved in jobs of subservience. They're mm -hmm. just a, a bunch of yes moms and no moms and yes sirs and no sirs. And they are paid minimum wage while, uh, you know, a few Bahamians, very few can earn more than minimum wage, but 
the executive level, the managers are all foreigners. You know, so so here it is. We're opening up another resort, which aims to be the same project and principles. We're, we're about to put in the same, uh, same the same system that is creating that or, or that is helping to foster the income equality that we have. And we're just going to put more Bahamians into that same system. So, in the meat grinder. Right. So, yes, we're employing them. But the issue with employment is that the majority of people make so little, while few of them make so much. And this is a part of the problem. And, you know, the question, the question was raised. How then do we get more Bahamians into owning resorts and opening resorts and that's just it because the average bahamian doesn't get the permits and the approvals to open up large-scale resorts like other people mm, so we, we basically we more bahamian ownership in the economy yeah we need to stop we, we we can't we can't be working well, no. Well, you have to you have to say black, but black uh, name and uh, on the show. Well, I suppose. <laughs> Wait, you, you, you no, you have to, you you have to because that that's, that that was the whole point that Chris was making just now. I thought that was, I thought he was saying the foreigners uh, were the managers and the executive level. Uh, yeah. Oh no! Well, what the thing is, white Bahamians already have property ownership. Uh, well, no, I, I, well, I wouldn't want to speak for Chris. Yeah. So, so how Chris many, how many point. resorts are owned by, how many large resorts are owned by white behemoths? Yeah, zero. I, and, and you know, we, you know, I'll, no. You think that would point, make it better? My, my point is that there, ends? there are just certain things where all behemoths are disenfranchised, irrespective of color. It's true. I mean, because there is a perception that foreign is better. So even if you are a white Bahamian or a black Bahamian, the fact that you are still a Bahamian is a negative stroke against you. You know, I, I, Denza, just, um, you know, I want to dig into this a little bit. Do you think that um, we see a lot of identity politics being played in the, in the, in the States? You've got, you know, Hispanics, African Americans, gays, lesbians, transgenders, uh, Muslim Americans, all these various groups. Do you think, um, I mean, given what we're seeing going on, do you think it's wise to uh, implement laws based on, you know, skin color and actually play that same game down here? Uh, just my, my gut reaction, Denzel, is. Um, think about laws, you sorry. Say, when you say something like we need to get money to black Bahamians, that seems to me like uh, it seems, well, it seems racist when we could easily say, let's get money to lower income Bahamians. They, they might be black, but they also, you know, they might be, they might be kind of red. They might be eating food on Long Island. You know, I, does skin, does skin color really matter? No, uh, <laughs> most certainly not. I was just talking about the history of the Bahamas. You understand? Mm. Mm -mm. Okay, okay, we're, we're on the same the same page there. Um, have you? Um, let me ask you guys a question. Have Have you ever heard of a uh, uh, you know, universal basic income as a policy? Yes. Do Do you have any uh, thoughts on that? as a way to uh, bridge the income inequality gap? Well, that would depend on how, how do you feel about uh, so, uh, socialism, democratic socialism? Oh, God. Are, you, are you asking me a question? Um, you know, I'm not really a labels guy. I, I, I really think we should, um, what I understand about economics and um, the level of the happiness index in a society is that the happy, happier countries tend to have lower income disparity. And that's from any income group. So that's the wealthiest and the poorest. Everyone is happier when there's a smaller income gap. Okay, so, so, so you would agree that we have to have 
des- we have to have desperate matches to, to get to get the gap closer for black payments and white payments. Uh, yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, you know, I, okay. I, so what? I, think- I so what? Where? Where's my point? Races. Oh no! For no, the it was last just point a- you made. No, it's just when you, 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 you specified that we need to get money to black Bahamians, and I was wondering whether it was... Um, okay, well, that's the same well, that's the same point, though, isn't it? Well, you're, you're conflating black and poor, and I don't think that's the case, because... Um, oh, no, well, we- it, there's, a, there's, a, there's a disparity in terms of wealth, is what I'm saying. I'm not saying mm. because you're black, you're poor. Mm. I definitely no, can't I mean, say that for myself. But, but I'm saying that there definitely is a wealth disparity between white payments and black payments. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I guess. Um, no, I definitely. So you would have to. Yeah. Theory. So for the point you made just now, you would have to. You would have to. That's the same point. So you would have to complete the two. The two have to be the same thing. You understand? So, but I guess uh, when it comes down to actually writing physical laws. And let's let's say um, you implement a, a UBI of you know four hundred dollars or six hundred dollars a month or whatever it is. Um, you wouldn't discriminate by skin color. You wouldn't say this. No, no. It. See, and and that's the thing. I it's not it's not gonna be, it's not gonna say oh well white people can't get this. It's just gonna it's it's just gonna be based on people's uh, wealth income. You understand? Oh okay. Oh okay okay. Okay, so you, you're a, you're a supporter of that policy. Yes, and you have to understand that that will impact black people more than white people in this country. Mm-mm-mm. Objectively, that's not up to debate. That's objective. Sure. No, I, I I think it's I think it's absolutely the move. You know, I, I think you're you're born into this country, and I, I think um, you know I think universalized internet is another one. But I, I think, you know, the rights of passage for being a Bahamian citizen and engaging in the social construct uh, contract, you should um, you should have equal opportunity as with all your your brethren. Um, no, great. Uh, hey, Denzel, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on the podcast. Um, yeah, no problem at all. Yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, I just want to say I'm. I'm so. Imp- I'm super impressed with. Uh, you know, two young guys uh, coming up with such a such a sophisticated and also poignant idea. Like I, I, I think I think it's it's such good timing for for you to come up with this, so we can maybe avoid. Uh, and I, I actually don't agree with Chris. I, I think um, the toxicity of the political ecosystem here is lesser than the one in the States. But um, yeah, I think it's good to nip it in the bud. So I think what you guys are doing is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, thank you for having us on. Sure, sure. Hey, um, before you guys leave, can uh, I'd like to finish up the conversation with uh, some rapid fire questions. Um, are you ready? Yeah, no problem. Okay. Sure, sure. All right, uh, Denzel, uh, and you're you're representing the yellow team. Let's start with you. Um, actually, but we'll start with yeah. First, Denzel, and then Chris. So, qu- question number one: Kalik or Sans? <laughs> Kalik. Is that is that Denzel? Yeah, Kalik. Definitely Kalik. Chris? Kalik Gold. Oh, wow. You're both Kalik guys. Kalik Gold. Not Kalik. Kalik Gold. Okay. okay. <laughs> and Kalik, Kalik Gold for our international listeners is the strongest Bahamian beer that we, we sell. I think, what is it? Seven and a half percent alcohol? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys are both traders, basically, because Sands is the more Bahamian beer, and you're uh, both both political parties are drinking uh, foreign beer, right? We what? we we hey I, we hey we know it's we know it's German. <laughs> it on origin. It, so if you it, want fight, it, we could fight. If you it, want fight, we could fight. It's foreign made. Okay. It's foreign made with local minded. Mm. 
Well, I mean, this is pretty much uh, what I'd expect from the political ruling bourgeoisie class. So, I'm <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Happy to hear that. Okay, question number two. Um, what is your favorite family island? Uh, Denzel, then Chris. Uh, definitely Exuma. That's where my family is from. Uh, and roll down. Beautiful, beautiful. You like boating. For me, Long Island. Oh, wow. Long Island. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry about the goat comment earlier. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. Okay. Well, that, I mean, that's actually on your flag, right? Yeah, so, that's, that's, that's on the crest of Long Island, uh, some goats. Yeah, so, okay, so that's not offensive at all. That's really no. in, the, that's, it's in the culture. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you know, you always got to be careful. You don't want to bring up the conversation of goats to Long Island people. Sometimes they get touchy. <laughs> no, I'm I'm not one of those types. I'm fine with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Long Island in name only. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, question number three: um, What is your favorite style of conch? How How do you take it? Hmm. Like salad, cracked, fritters. Grill. What, what, what? Grill conk. Ah, plantain, be... onions, sweet peppers, a little corn. Grill conk. Is grill, is grill if they put a lot of spice in it? Yes, but it fritters. has to be very spicy. But fritters, fritters, if it ain't spicy. What? You, wait, you don't like spicy food? No, I say fritters if it ain't spicy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no, uh, so grilled conch is uh, when you put it in the tin foil and throw it on the grill. Yep. And and Denzel, you're uh, you're a fritters guy, but you, but only if it's not spicy. No, 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 no. I say in fritters, if the grilled conch ain't spicy. Ah, okay. So fritters are your number two, but otherwise you'll sign on to the grilled conch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, question number four, uh, Denzel. Then Chris, if you could answer after, uh, is the Bahamas a real place? <laughs> <laughs> I I can say I you well, you gotta say no. Yeah, Denzel, you're saying no? Yeah, you gotta say no. Okay, so we're living in imagination land, according to Denzel from the Progressive Liberal Party. Um, oh, y'all take you guys, you can't be and, that specific. Uh, and uh, Chris, let's let's see what Chris Strawn from the, representing the F and M, the Free National Movement. Um, let's see, uh, is the Bahamas a real place? The Caribbean Chris. is not a real place. Right. Uh, expand. The Caribbean in general, we're 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 we're, we're all in a simulation. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> we're playing uh, what's what's the game? A uh, tourism tycoon yeah. in a computer game. Precisely. <laughs> right, right, right. Except that there's a a white hand on the mouse, and he's just dropping you know, dropping hotels everywhere, and you know, dropping the. The sloops in to overfish the oceans. Gotcha. <laughs> um, question number five. Uh, this is the magic wand question. So um, Denzel and then Chris, if you could give me your answer, you've got. I, I'm going to give you a magic wand, and you can wave it, and you can get any change over the entire Bahamas just by waving it. Uh, Denzel, what do you do? Over any island? No, man. The Bahamas. You've got a magic wand for the country. Oh, you mean anything at all? Um, I mean, nothing gross, but like whatever you think would be good for the country. Yeah, it would have to be financial, <laughs> financial stability. So you would just wish for a bunch of money to drop on the beach, or yes, sir, or not? No, for everybody in the country. Okay, 
and that would uh, so you're you're not of the opinion that we should teach men how to fish. You think we should just drop a bunch of square grouper on the beach? You have to look deep into. We talked about the history of the Bahamas already, so I wouldn't I wouldn't go deeper into it. But yeah, okay. I stick with my answer. Give people fish, don't teach them. I that's uh, that's that and that's a problematic answer as well. I would go deeper into it, but I think you want to ask Chris a question too. Yeah. Chris, so for me, the magic, magic wand for me would be our governance. I don't I don't have to think about that. Um, I think um, almost all of our issues stem from how uh, we practice our politics, how uh, as a people we are governed, uh, what we accept. Uh, from our governments, what we expect from our governments, uh, where we hold them accountable, where we don't hold them accountable. Uh, the majority of our problems stem from our governance and how we are governed as a people. And that needs to change. And once that change for the better, then you'll see a lot more positive changes in the country. So definitely for me, don't have to think about it. Magic wand, the mm. governance. So, and uh, who are these magic people? Are, uh, is it you two? Uh, if if we put you guys into office, if you have the designs of running for uh, running for parliament, running for seats, do you, uh, do you guys will you guys have it what it takes in the future to clean up government? Well, I will say this personally, I don't have the desire. No, I don't. I don't think that. I don't think that you have to be actively involved in politics to bring about some sort of national change. Uh, that's just my personal belief. So no, I, I I don't see that as a, you know, a thing for me. But um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm definitely willing to help in the backgrounds and sidelines as much as I can with uh, you know, people who are willing to bring about that change, because you know we're a country of almost four hundred thousand people. So there are people here who can bring about that change. There are people who are abroad and want to come home, who can bring about that change. So it doesn't necessarily have to be me. Whomever it is, is best suited for the, the position of, of ameliorating the country, then I am, I am all for it. Great, great. So yeah, your, your position is uh, the citizenry can put more pressure on the government to perform. Yep. Agreed okay. entirely. Well, Great guys, I, you know I'm so impressed. You're two young guys, and you know you've you've come up with this great idea, and uh, uh, basically uh, it's a vaccine against political tribalism. And uh, I hope the tests work out. I hope everything works out. Um, where can uh, where can our listeners come and find you online? How can they? Uh, where, what should they Google uh, to, if they want to learn more about? topics uh, on Bahamian politics? Well, we're on um, every social media right now. We're on Facebook, uh, Spectrum Politics. That's our Facebook page. Um, we're on Instagram, again, Spectrum Politics. And Twitter, uh, if you can't guess what it is by now, then I don't know what to say about you, but yeah, <laughs> it's Spectrum Politics. And the handle on Twitter is at Spectrum P-O-L. Um, those are our only means of um, access right now. And then, of course, we have a podcast. and We're on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Um, we're, we're on a number of podcast sharing sites where we try to make it as accessible as possible. And you can find uh, the podcast on Anchor by typing in uh, Bahamas Politics Podcast. Or you can just visit our Twitter or Facebook page and we post the podcast links there. Okay, good. that's great. Uh, and uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll put the, all these links in the show notes so our listeners can just uh, click and they can uh, follow up with you guys. Oh, thanks. so um, yeah, yeah. So uh, hopefully we can, uh, you know, if any Americans or, or, or French listeners want to come and uh, find out more about Bahamian politics, they can uh, check out your podcast. So uh, thanks so much for coming on uh, the podcast, you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Yeah, on. thanks for having we, us. We appreciate it so much. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to do this again sometime. Let's, uh, let's wait for something really, really scandalous and juicy, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe uh maybe election season uh come up or something 
and uh, maybe we can uh, dive back in and uh, look at them and the things together. It sounds like a plan. You, you know, we can probably have you on our podcast uh, later down the road as well. Oh, that sounds great. That's uh, so kind of you. Hey, uh, cheers, Denzel. Cheers, Chris. Uh, let's play catch up. All right. Take All care, right. Man. See you, sir. Nice to meet you guys. Likewise. Take care. So thanks. Thanks for listening to the episode, uh, cronyism and colonialism. And um, I just wanted to put a note at a note here that uh, often uh, I like to poke fun at um, the Bahamian political system at, at, as uh, as we all might at our own political systems. But um, often, you know, it really is in jest and we are, I'm really, I'm purposefully uh, bringing up the straw men arguments to sort of illustrate exactly how absurd uh, political, political tribalism could be, you know, because uh, so, so often these days when we're arguing or debating politics with an interlocutor, Rather than speak with them honestly and present um, how we feel and how we think on a topic, often we will, uh, instead of arguing against them and their honest views, we will debate sort of a caricature of them. So, uh, yeah, w- what I'm trying to do in these conversations is, is bring to light some, um, some stereotypes in, in the hopes that we can recognize their absurdity for what it is and perhaps uh, maybe uh, deal with issues more honestly. So I hope uh, I hope I accomplish I hope I'm accomplishing it. Um, if you liked the podcast, uh, subscribe, rate it five stars. Um, if you want to support, do the same subscribe and rate it. Um, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. that's helpful. And um, if you have any questions or comments or, you know, criticisms, you can uh, shoot them at, to me on Twitter. I'm at Nassau Alex, or you can shoot me a message, an email at conversations with a conk. Um, I bought a new headset. I think that the sound quality will be much better. And uh, yeah, that was the end of the first five episodes. So um Excited for episode six. So I uh, hope I'll see you next episode. It's going to be a really great one. We're um, redoing the branding and uh, changing a couple things around on the podcast. And I think you're going to like the new changes and the new guests. So uh, see you there.